Good morning. So in the continuous to our class antidiuretics. Now antidiuretics it is inhibit the water excretion without affecting the salt excretion. So antidiuretic it is inhibiting the water excretion without affecting the salt excretion. This drug reducing the urine volume, particularly diabetes insipidus, in which the primary uh, indication. Now, whenever we are talking about the di diabetes, don't confuse with the diabetes mellitus and diabetes insipidus. Now, what is diabetes mellitus? Diabetes mellitus is a, uh, you can say that uh, metabolic disorder which occurs due to the alteration or the disturbance of the carbohydrate protein and the fat metabolism and which is characterized by the hyperglycemia so that means uh, you can say that high sugar level of course you can say that due to the insulin uh, decreased level or the insulin resistance but in case of the diabetes insipidus uh, the name though it is calling as the diabetes but it is not related to the uh, blood sugar level clear blood sugar level but what happened in case of the Diabetes mellitus, that it is the, one of the characteristics is the frequent urination. Now, here also in the diabetes uh, uh, insipidus, there is a uh, frequent urination, it will be there. Plus, frequent urination, it will be there. Now, antidiuretic, what are the drugs are there? Antidiuretic like ADH, which is also called as a vasopressin, and their analogs. Next, thyroid diuretic sometimes, of course, the thyroid is a diuretic, but some cases it may act as an antidiuretic specific. And in uh, methacine, chlorpromide, carbamazepine, though it is used into the other disease, but they may act. In, again, the specific is specific. Type. But here we are going to discuss about the antidiuretic hormone. Now, antidiuretic hormone or the ADH or the vasopressin, it is a non uh, peptide uh, secreted by the posterior pituitary you know that it is secreted by the posterior pituitary along with the oxytocin clear Ox along with the oxytocin now it is synthesized into the hypothalamic nerve bodies so it is going to be synthesized into the hypothalamic nerve bodies as a large precursor peptide along with the binding protein that is the neurophysin so it is Synthesized into the hypothalamic nerve bodies as a large precursor of the peptide along with the binding protein neurophysin. Both are transported down the axon to the nerve ending in the medium elements and part uh, nervosa. Next is osmoreceptor. receptor. This is important. Osmoreceptor receptor present into the hypothalamus and volume receptor present into the left atrium, ventricles, pulmonary veins, primarily regulating the rate of the ADH release governed by the body's hydration. That means it is related to the blood pressure. Clear? It is related to the blood pressure also. Now, osmoreceptors are also present into the hepatic portal system, which sense the ingested salt and release the ADH. Clear? It is released to osmoreceptor. It is one of the important phenomena which is uh, responsible for the or trigger the ADH release. Now the two main physiological stimuli for the ADH release are the plasma osmolarity and contraction into the extracellular plate. So these are the two major stimuli. Now if we see about this, say if we see the first figure hypothalamus, from the hypothalamus posterior pituitary it is release of the ADH. Now what happens? If the body is hydrated, clear? If the body is hydrated, then there is a less release of the ADH. If we, there is already body is hydrated, so there is a less release of the ADH. Now if the ADH is released less, then the water, less water is absorbed. So in this case, water it will be absorbed less. Clear? Water it will be absorbed less, so urine it will be into the diluted. Clear? Urine it will be in the diluted. Whereas, if the body is dehydrated condition, in case of the dehydrated condition, there is the increased release of the ADH. Clear? Increased release of the ADH. Now, if the increased release of the ADH, more water it will be absorbed. Clear? So, more water it will be absorbed. That means blood volume it will be increasing and concentrated. It will call the concentrated urine. 
Now again, here we are telling that like sympathetic stimulation, angiotensin 2, hyper osmolarity, decrease into the arterial receptor, all those things it is responsible for the triggering the hypothalamus as the and the posterior pituitary, so they are releasing the vasopressin or the ADH. Now this vasopressin they will act on the two receptors, either the V1 or the V2. That they are acting on the V1 and V2. V1 presence into the blood vessels, it is responsible for the contraction. So it is increasing the vascular resistance, peripheral vascular resistance, and the blood pressure it is increased. Whereas V2 it is present into the kidney and they will cause the fluid reabsorption. Then uh, they will responsible for the fluid reabsorption. Now fluid reabsorption means you can say that increase the blood volume. So increase the blood volume again in turn it will increase the blood pressure. Now coming to the vasopressin analog like uh, lipressin. Though somewhat it is less potent than the uh, vasopressin, but it is act on the both V1 and V2 receptor and has the longer duration of action, which is almost 4 to 6 hours. Next is the tarlipressin, which is a synthetic product of the vasopressin and is specifically used for the bleeding of the esophageal varies. It is used for the esophageal varies and may produce less severe adverse effect than the Lipressin. Next is desmopressin. Desmopressin again, it is a synthetic peptide and selective V2 agonist. It is a selective V2 agonist and it is 12 times more potent than the uh, you can say that soluble vasopressin but has the negligible vasoconstrictor activity because it is acting on the V2, then they do not have any effect on the uh, V1. So, this is about the vasopressin analog and about the how the vasopressin is acting.